G'day everyone, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. Uh, today, I'm talking about our campaign, Conservation from the Couch, and your ability to learn, research, and vote for the project that Aussie Ark will deliver next. We need your help. Aussie Ark is a conservation organisation that focuses on native wildlife conservation, especially in and around the mighty Barrington Tops region of New South Wales. For the last decade, Aussie Ark has worked to secure populations of endangered mammals and turtles and habitats and bring them back to what they once were. We have a great track record. We've bred over 500 Tasmanian devils. We occupy thousands of hectares of land that we remove the threats of feral pests, fire, invasive weeds, uh, we can artificially provide water to alleviate drought, and remove livestock and no more logging. So we're reinvigorating the habitat. And what we put together is five projects, each of them different. And what you need to do is research, learn, think, and vote sensibly to decide which project we deliver next. I mentioned voting sensibly. Sometimes it's really easy to vote with your gut or your heart, but that mightn't be representing the species that needs your vote the most. Which is most urgent? And are you voting sensibly? Are you voting with your stomach and the way you feel? Or are you voting because it's the most urgent? Have a think about that and here are the five projects. I'm gonna start with the Hunter River Turtle. Now the Hunter River Turtle lives in the Hunter River and the Hunter River only. It's a river that exits near Newcastle in, in, in mid New South Wales. Uh, the turtle is facing catastrophic decline in its population. The recent drought, I was personally out there. We rescued hundreds of turtles from drying pools where they faced a certain death and we took them to deeper water to see out the drought. At the same time, we found hundreds that had died. We were too late, we couldn't be everywhere at once. The turtle can have implemented a reasonably easy and efficient program. Uh, we need founders. So we need to start a population with 20 or 30 turtles. And to do that, we need a facility. Uh, we already have a world-class facility for the Manning River Turtle. It's a project that's proven. It's a project that works. We now need this for the hunter. By providing that facility, we can have our founding turtles breed. We can produce hundreds of hatchlings every year and we can build up that insurance population at the same time we can return hatchlings back to the waterways. We can look at those waterways, protecting nesting sites, looking at water quality, removing the threat of feral pests, and that's the Hunter River Turtle Project. I love Dazzyurids, and Dazzyurids are carnivorous marsupials, Tasmanian devils, quolls, Anikinus dunnarts, these weird and wonderful and uniquely Australian species. Now one of them is called the baby-faced assassin. It's the tiger quoll or spotted tail quoll. And I love its name, the baby-faced assassin, because it's cute, has a baby face, but it's deadly. And it's a predator, a carnivorous predator. Now, tiger quolls range from Tasmania all the way up through Victoria, New South Wales, and up into Northern Queensland. Throughout their entire range, they are in steep decline. The fires that burnt in this last season burnt so much tiger quoll habitat and undoubtedly so many quolls. But whose problem is it? In Tasmania, they're doing better than Queensland. In New South Wales, they're not doing very well. Aussie Ark is stepping up to that challenge. Now, the quolls need a facility. We need to start a population. We need to be able to build a facility to then breed quolls. Once we breed, we can then release to Aussie Ark sanctuaries and really start an increase with big numbers. Once we've done that, we can return to wild if suitable. And if there's other projects that mean that we can put them out and the threats of the feral fox, the feral cat and fires have all been addressed. But at the present time, there isn't a major conservation initiative for New South Wales spotted tail quolls. That's where we come in. There are four species of quoll in Australia. The spotted tail quoll, the eastern quoll, the northern quoll, and the western quoll. They're all endangered. There's nothing like them in the rest of the world. It's up to us. Let me tell you about the broad tooth rat. Now, there is a subspecies of broad tooth rat that lives in the Barrington Tops. And that's it. Nowhere else on earth. Now the rat's numbers have been in steep decline for the last decade. They inhabit 
High altitude, montane swamps, cold areas, big swamps full of mosses. 10 years ago, the rats occupied 14 different swamps. Now they're only found in seven. And of those seven, their largest swamp, 50% of it burnt in the recent bushfires. The rat is in steep decline. There could be as few as 500 left in the entire world's population. And they're right next door to Aussie Ark. Now, so little is known about the rat. And I just want to touch on that word, rat. I wish it was called an indigenous name, a cultural name, or I wish it was called the fairy rat because we tend to like it more but it's a really important rat, it's a native rat. It's not like the feral rats around your house. It's been in those swamps for all of history. And now on our watch, it's disappearing. And what we need to do is partner with research to understand how many rats are there. I say 500, is there 100 or is there 1,000? We need to know that. We can then collect for insurance population. We can breed up that insurance population, but we need facilities. So the project needs to facilitate research, build facilities for captive breeding of broad tooth rats. We can secure the species and their genetics in that insurance population, and we can return to the wild once we've addressed the threats. That's the broad tooth rat project. Everybody loves koalas. Me too. And koalas, before the recent bushfires, were on a trajectory in New South Wales to be extinct by 2050. Uh, I'm sure we can all imagine the fires have only made things worse. They burnt so much koala habitat. Now, the main thing is to keep koalas in habitat in the wild. So to protect koalas, we need to address diseases like chlamydia and retrovirus. We need to address the threat of fire, feral pest, roads, invasive weeds. Now, Aussie Ark already has an existing koala population but the density is much lower than it should be. So, by initiating a prototype of a forest, we aim to plant the first thousand trees. And we need to make sure that they will grow, that the irrigation is put in correctly, that they're the right species that are not only suitable to that environment, but koala food. And we need academic partners to be able to come in and help Aussie Ark manage a disease-free koala population, perhaps the first in the world. Now, we need to start with a small project to know that we can get it right. Then we can plant a million trees. That's the koala project. Aussie Ark is a native wildlife conservation organization. Now, we work in a couple of tiers. One is species recovery. That's really looking at an individual species and whether it's ensuring their genetics are captured in captivity so that if they're lost in the wild, they're not lost forever, they're not extinct. It also means we can breed to release to sanctuary or back to wild. Now, for the last decade, Aussie Ark has worked to establish insurance populations of species that once called the Barrington Tops home. Most are now absent. Now, in doing so, we've already established those insurance populations of quolls and devils and bandicoots and potteroos and bedongs and rock wallabies. It's now time to rewild the Barrington Tops. And we don't have a solution for the feral fox and the feral cat. And noting that Australia has the worst mammal extinction rate on Earth. We've lost nearly 40 species of small mammal. It's as many as the rest of the world put together. Now, the feral fox and the feral cat are responsible for about 90% of those extinctions. Aussie Ark uses fencing, conservation fencing. But don't see it like a fence. We create islands. Now, how does that work? Well, if I asked you to picture an island in the middle of the ocean, now look at some palm trees and sand, you don't see a fence around that island, do you? But the ocean is a barrier. It can stop feral pest invasion, the threat of fire, the threat of weeds. That's what conservation fencing does. Now, we have sanctuaries. They're fully fenced. We've eradicated the feral pests. Now it's time to take our animals from insurance populations and return them to these islands, return them to the wild. And that is the Rewild the Barringtons project. Your homework for today is to go to the Aussie Ark website. Find these five projects, it's very easy. Read the projects, talk about them with friends, family, consider it and cast your vote. As it stands today, we have a couple of thousand votes, but we're not going to act until we've got 20,000.
So pick your project, tell your friends, try and get them to support you. Help us achieve those votes and then we can deliver the project. What I would like as your second bit of homework is tell us why you've picked the project you have. Put it in the comments, please. I would love to understand what motivates you and what you see important in conservation. Now that's all for today. Thanks very much. See you later. Thanks for watching everyone. Now the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Uh, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. But this is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.